Sir Cuckoo and Sir Archie Peveril. Life is a dream of the past. Darling, what a divine boy, isn't he? He shares her secret. Maybe she's playing a game with us. With you. Odd, isn't it? You hate the past. We cling to it. This summer, they relive it. Anouk M.A. and Joss Ackland from Dirk Bogard's novel, Voices in the Garden. This week, Screen 2, tomorrow at 10 on BBC Two. There were the platforms, there were the flares, there were the tank tops, there was the hair, there were the clowns, but most of all, there were the sounds of the 70s, tonight at 10 past 7 on BBC Two. Well, amongst the celebrities joining Mike Smith to test their showbiz knowledge on BBC One now are Jonathan Morris and Geoffrey Hughes. This is BBC Two reflecting on the best of the past week's editions of The Late Show. <coughs> In this week's Late Again, Late Picasso, the artist's final disturbing work decoded by his biographer John Richardson. How a year in Provence became a lifetime's industry. Ian McEwan talking to John Updike. And hoarding art. <laughs> Hello. By the time he died in 1973, Picasso was already established as the century's greatest artist, being to modern art what Michelangelo had been to the Renaissance. But 20 years on, despite his continuing reputation and the enormous exposure of his work, there are still areas of Picasso's art that are not easily appreciated or understood. This is particularly true of the late work produced over the final 30 years of his life and characterized by an intensely personal, obsessive, even wild quality. It's these works that are the subject of a major exhibition currently touring Germany. For some critics, they represent the most powerful art Picasso ever produced. But what do they mean, and why did he paint them? Well, the... <laughs>